Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Light Lessons with Sierra. This week, I am so excited because I get to introduce to you my friend, Alan H. Green. You may have seen him on Broadway in School of Rock or Sister Act or Play On or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and listen to him on some of those cast recordings. Come on. He is one of my favorite people, greatest friends and wonderful humans and true light workers. So I'm really thrilled to have him here with us this week to talk about support. Enjoy this episode of Light Lessons with Sierra featuring Alan H. Green. <laughs> Greetings, Berthea. Salutations, Rep. I knew you were gonna have a white background. And I was, like, I was like, I better show up. And so I, I'm literally on a white background. This is like a closet. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the corner of this room in my mom's house where I'm sleeping. But I have to say my sister got all new bedroom furniture. And so I actually could turn it around and show the, cause when I first got up here, it was some crazy, some stuff my dad had bought like 20 years ago. It was literally the craziest looking bedroom set I literally had ever seen. So, welcome to my parents' house. Welcome yeah. to your parents' house. Exactly. We Just, family, girl. We, we family. family. <laughs> the Reverend Dr. Smoothie Green. I'm so happy to see you right now. Love you so much. I wish that we could be closer right now. Oh. Everyone, you guys know that this is one of my favorite humans on the planet, and there is nobody that I wanted to talk to more than Alan H. Green, the Reverend Dr. Smoothie Green, for those that are in the inn, Woo -woo. around the light lesson of support. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan H. Green here to talk with us about support. Hi, oh, Rev. Goodness. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. Sweet birthday, oh. <laughs> Our conversations have always been, and I feel like that's one of the things that just drew me to you are literally the definition of a light worker from like moment one of knowing you. You bring so much light to people on all the levels. So thank you so much for being here with us today. I know that everybody is freaking out because you are a worthy, worthy, just beautiful human. What a well, game, you know. I thank you for having me. And one of the things I, I just loved about you is that you, you have so, in one of the most humble ways, acknowledged your platform and kind of your place in this world and in our community and have just used it for 100% sincere goodness. It's not an act. It's not a character. It's not something you think your fans want to hear. It's literally just you putting yourself out there in such an empowering and inspiring way. And it's just, it's beautiful to see. And I'm just glad to be a tiny string on your coattails. Well, your family, <laughs> your family. Thank you. I'm receiving those words. I'm working on receiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. Notice I didn't put a receiving light lesson because I'm like, nah, I'm not ready. I didn't not put today. Not on today. Day. Yeah, yeah. Not on today. Not today. Not yet. So I'm obsessed with lately starting with the definition, like the basic. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, the Webster's oh, definition Webster. of support because I just want your thought. When we look at these definitions, they give you so many different ways to look at it and say, oh, yeah, that is support. So here's three different definitions under support in the dictionary. Okay. Support. To bear all or part of the weight, to hold up. Okay, that's one. Mm -hmm. Number two, to give assistance to, to be actively interested in and concerned for the success of. Mm. And number three, to suggest the truth of, to corroborate. Read the second one again. The second one is to give assistance to, to be actively interested in and concerned for the success of. 
when I read that one, actually, it really did make me think of you. And I just want to quickly say, and then I want to turn this over to you. When we met, I was so nervous as I was preparing for School of Rock and we were in rehearsal. We finished a scene. I feel like it was like here at Horace Green or something. <laughs> right. We were in the scene together. And you just came over to me and, and not a lot of people were coming over to me yet. You know, I'm in my own like space. You just walked right over to me and you were like, I just want you to know you are really good in this role. You are doing so good. You just wanted to let me know that you'd see what I'm doing. And I never even told you this. It was beyond helpful for me that day. It was so helpful because we live in such self-doubt. And so when I saw that, for whatever your reasoning was for doing that, you were, in my opinion, you were actively interested in and concerned with the success of someone other than you who just came over and just gave of yourself. That was the ultimate form of support. That's all that it takes sometimes. I just want to say that, Ooh. you know? That's, so, that's, yeah. that's, really, that's really moving to me to hear you. Yeah, I never heard you say that before. No, I mean, I've no. still seen so many things, but that is, <laughs> that's my first memory of you. Yeah, that's it so really interesting. Is. Yeah. Well, it, it was just interesting because before I met you, I had decided some things about you before I met you. You know this. Yeah. That just weren't true and weren't right. And I don't know why I did that. I don't normally do that with people in general. And so I think that was probably my way of acknowledging what an injustice I had done hmm. by making assumptions about somebody that I didn't even know. Which and then know. to find out that not only was I wrong, that I knew you and I were gonna be linked together. Yeah. I just knew that. Once yeah. I actually met you, I was like, oh, not only was I wrong about her, we're like connected. Yeah. So that was probably the beginning of me trying to, you know, right that wrong mm. and basically apologize to you. Mm. And also speak the truth that I thought you were doing a hell of a job. <laughs> That's also part of it too, which is what made it worth it to me to say that to you. Yeah. And how important that is to acknowledge, especially in our industry, we can't do these jobs without each other. Yeah, yeah just no, can't. No. I mean, it is the ultimate definition of support. We can't, I can't right. do my job without you doing your job. Yeah. And yeah. knowing that this- or, or in some of the cases where people are doing it without each other, it's literally the antithesis of joy and fun. That's right. And, you know, and that's one of the things that I feel like I, I try to bring to a rehearsal or to a, to a, it's like, if we're not having fun and we're not having a good time and, and we're not loving on each other, then we might as well just go do something else. That's right. Because that's the gift that we have of these gifts. And if we can't express them in like a fun, joyful way, because it ain't rocket science, no. but it's also vital and necessary. Yes. Yeah, I feel like you have been a support system because then, then as, as we've known each other, there's countless stories within our industry where you are such a support system. It's not just about being on stage, a star on stage. It's also taking care of a company, taking care of, you also are taking care of in instances where you're a supporting player, you mm -hmm. are taking care of the leading players who yeah, often yeah. need that really right. really bad but you are for me the example of somebody who is able to see you're so empathetic and you're able to see around you who needs what where where can i support where can i support where does that come from in you well you know i, I will say about 12 13 years ago we were talking with with some other actors and we were talking about you know all the bad experiences and the diva experiences that people have and the nightmare rehearsal processes and all that stuff. And I just very honestly and sincerely said, you know, I haven't really experienced a lot of that in my career. I, I guess I've just been lucky. And a very good friend of mine turned to me and said, you haven't experienced it because you were there and mm -hmm. you didn't allow that mess to happen. And I was like, what? 
And then he said, yeah, because when you're in the room, all you bring in is light. Yeah. And so all the people who are trying to bring in darkness, your light overpowers them. And it's like, yeah. oh, we're not going to, we're not going to have that nonsense in this space. That's right. And for several months, I kind of was like, wait, what? And then I was like, you know what? Not only do I receive that, right? Talking about receiving, I'm now going to be deliberate. Oh, activate it without being a martyr. Yeah. I'm going to now make this part of what I'm bringing into these spaces. I'm going to bring light and try to get as much light out of everybody around me as possible. The work is very serious, but I also want to have a good time. Yes. And, I, and, and, and my goal is for there to be as much light coming from everybody as possible. Yeah. Well, you're on the wrong episode today. This was light lessons. <laughs> we don't know what to do with that. <laughs> We're confused. <laughs> you were working, you were looking for the dark workers episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is everything. That is everything. But the fact that somebody saw something in you, see, that's what, it's almost like we're passing the light on and somebody mm -hmm. saw that and light begets light and love begets love. They saw that in you. By you hearing and receiving that, it activated you to be deliberate. I love those words. I love how you articulated that so much just now. I think that's why the, the, the second definition spoke to me, the actively interested. Yes, yes. Because it, because it's a choice. Yes. But it's a choice that has to continually be made. Yes. You got to keep activating it. Yeah. In our, in our efforts to support. It's so easy to one off. I did a post. I gave a donation. I tweeted it. I supported it. I'm done. Yep. But you know, I think the thing about that is that's support that now is in the past. So we got to keep it activated so that our support stays in the future and, and our support stays forward moving. So two questions. How do you think we can stay active in our interest to support others? And when we are tired, where can we get inspired to stay actively interested in supporting? Right. So I really think we got to take some time and go back into our corners and figure out how to support ourselves. Oh, that's good. So ultimately, that's where I feel like support needs to be considered today because I feel like we've all have been supporting a cause, supporting a thing, supporting a this. And I have a lot of people in my life right now who I just realized people are depressed. Yeah. People are empty. People are tired. People are hurt. People are, people are confused. So the, the word I feel today is I feel like we got to take some time and figure out how to support ourselves and hold up ourselves so that we then can go back out there yeah. and give real support to others and yeah. spread real light to others. I'll never forget growing up when we started flying on planes for little family vacations and they would make that announcement about the, the mask coming down when they would say, make sure you put your mask on first if you're traveling with a child. And I remember always thinking, oh, my mother's not doing that. She loves me. She's going to put that mask on me first. And I'll never forget around 12 or 13, I heard that and I was like, oh, but wait a minute. If she's not giving herself enough oxygen, she can't put the mask on me. So actually, her highest expression of love for me is to oxygenate herself first. That's right. And then she'll have the strength and the support to oxygenate me. And that's something that I think about anytime I'm on a plane. It's, it's, it's a reminder. So I just feel like that's kind of where we are now. Yeah. We, we've been given everybody else and the causes and, and all of that that's so important, but people are burnt out. Yeah. But, and the difficult thing is, how do you support yourself in a situation where a lot of the things that you typically have access to, to fill you up, you don't have access to it. That's right. So we have to actively figure out, all right, 
I'm feeling a little empty and my normal things that fill me up, I, I don't have access to them. So we have to be deliberate and take the time to figure out, I need to, I need to throw some support to myself. Yes. And that's going to mean different things to different people, obviously. And we're all in different situations, but I've just recently had so many, and I've got some strong friends, obviously you're among them, but people are tired. Yeah. People are burnt out. I'm talking about from like actor friends who have no idea when their next paycheck is going to come in to like my doctor friends who have never stopped making a paycheck and will continue to make a paycheck. So it's not just about who's got a salary going or not. Right. Even in the midst of the chaos, you could also say we've been supporting each other in a new way. I you know, agree. a veil has been lifted. Yes. You know, George Floyd, that was like, that was like a turning point in our history. Yes. What he, what, what his, his murder represents. Like I said, I was listening to that podcast and, um, the fellow, his name is like Resmond. He wrote Grand Grandmother's Hands, I think. So it was him oh. and the woman who wrote White Fragility. They were being interviewed by somebody. And at the end of the conversation, the interviewer said, well, is there anything that you know that you haven't said or that any other thing that you want to talk, out, talk about? And, and Resmond, the brother, he was like, nope, I'm tired. I'm good. You know? And it yeah. was just like, yeah, that's where a lot of people are right now. Yes. And you know, this visual comes to me, especially you and I are both home right now. We're both in, you know, we're not in New York. We both, we went to homes. And it's funny when, I don't know if you've seen this in your own house, but there's like old furniture, you know, there's old things. And I notice like certain things have been maybe sat on it for so long that it starts bowing. It's like it yeah. needs a new support. Yes. And so once Black Lives Matter especially came to the forefront like it did, and you and I talked about this so much, it's about the exhaustion level. Mm -hmm. We were just exhausted. It was almost like all the white people that had suddenly been awake were like, oh, we'll support, but we're maybe supporting in, on the outsides of the table as opposed to being the new support beam that was like, let me help with the, do you know what I mean? That yeah, visual absolutely. helps me. So, that's yes. like, no, 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 we got to, first we got, oh, yes. we got to listen. And will you speak about when you were asked to speak at your church? Because you were exhausted, but you knew that you had to be that support still so that hopefully we're listening and can take some of that weight. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I will say the way in which one of my pastors asked me to speak made a big difference. Yeah. You know, this was like when we were really raw from it, I don't know, four or five weeks ago. And he just was basically like, look, I know you get tired of being a magical Negro for people, um, but this is not your responsibility to educate us. It's not your responsibility to teach us. But at the same time, we need to hear from you. Yeah. And so will you consider doing this? And so I really appreciated the thoughtful way in which he asked. And it really took the pressure off knowing that if I said no, it would have been okay and he'd have totally understood. Yep. So I took a night and I thought about it and it was like, well, no, let me go ahead and put a couple of these words together and go ahead and do it. Because the truth is I had been having the conversations a lot. Yes. With, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, because that's how I kind of roll. I like the one-on-one yes. -on -one kind of vibe. So to just put it all together in front of an audience that now has, let me tell you what, that little sermon I preached, I've heard from people in other countries. People have shared that sermon. So I'm, I'm grateful that, that somehow, just the way I, I shared a story and compared it to a, a couple in our church whose daughter's a healthcare worker and how they have a new anxiety for her every time she leaves the house, but that my mother has that anxiety, has had that anxiety her whole life. Yes. And, and that I didn't even understand that. Like, you know, when I was in my 20s and she'd say, well, be careful of how long you're going to be. I was like, I'm grown. You don't, you know, but it wasn't that she was worried about me. It was, she was worried about what's the world going to do to her black son, right? Okay. So that, that is one of the pieces of that little sermon that, that really seemed to speak to a lot of people in a new way. I want to interject and say that another thing that you did, I think that was helpful to get people to listen was you said, I understand. You were so empathetic too of saying, I understand that you are confused, but what right, did you because I was confused. Yes. 
Exactly. And that, that, okay, so that part definitely was the biggest part that resonated. Basically, what I was saying was like, look, I get it, folks, that you don't know what's going on. I was the recipient of it. And for the first two decades of my life, I didn't know what was going on, even though, and then of course, as you know, I shared all these yep. crazy things that happened to me growing up. Yeah. It wasn't until I lived in another country and the suppression that I have every day as a black man in my country finally wasn't there because I was in another country. Yeah. Didn't really understand the weight of the suppression. Yes. But it took me being out of America to even realize that it was there because it's so indoctrinated in all of us. Yeah. That's and I was the direct recipient of it. Yeah. And I still didn't know. Yeah. It's so powerful. It's so, but again, I just, the way that you articulate things, you're so helpful and it's so supportive. You are just full of such strength and wisdom and you show up even when you are exhausted but so i guess my question for you is where do you draw from for your support who supports you certainly my certainly my faith and and i know we all have different experiences with faith and it makes sense that somebody who's had my life experiences is a person of faith you know that makes sense to me just like it makes sense to that some of my friends who are not people of faith, it makes sense to me that through their life experiences, and I hope that at some point they'll have experiences that might change that. I also just had a really dynamic father. And I owe, I owe a lot of who I am and what I do to who my dad was and is yeah. through me. Yeah. You know, And one of the things about my dad, even though he, he's been dead for 13, 14 years now, he died when he was 60 of cancer. He was diagnosed and 10 days later he was gone. Um, but one of the things that I've learned is that even though I lost him so soon, way too soon, I still was one of the lucky ones to have him. Mm. You know? Yeah. I, 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 I was really one of the lucky ones. Honoring him and the memory of him and carrying on the stuff that he put in me, you know, because I'm not a father, but I'm an uncle and I got a lot of God children. And so it's important to me, again, to be deliberate about continuing my dad's legacy yeah. in, in any kind of ways that I can. So I draw, I draw a lot from, from him. And certainly my family in general. Sometimes you just got to take the time to just make some biscuits and sit down next to my mom and watch a game show. Yeah. You know, that's just as valuable as any Broadway stage I could be on. Yes. And in some instances, it's more valuable. Yeah. You know? And so I got to stop and take the time. It's funny, you know, they always say go where the work is, right? And this is like experience where the experience is. Wow. You know, wow. right now, I don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot of options. I can't just run out and there's, a, there's this cool water park in Baytown. And I know as I'm driving around, I'm always like, oh, you should go there. That's so much fun. That brings you so much joy. Why haven't you? Oh, that's right. It's closed. Everything is closed. We're in a pandemic. Yeah. And so I don't have the choice of all these experiences. So I got to choose the experiences that are options to me. Yep. And so sitting next to my mother and watching Steve Harvey on Family Feud, I'm not going to sit there and wish I was somewhere else. I'm going to sit there and take that in and drink it up. Yeah. Because she's still here. I certainly wouldn't, in, in normal circumstances, wouldn't have the time yeah. to sit around with my mom for weeks. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing, when I think about other friends and other artists, and other people struggling, you know, again, even in my sleepless nights of like, when am I going to make money again? And when am I going to do, I have this house to come to with a family that I enjoy being with. I'm here with my mom, my sister, and one of my twin nephews, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah. My mother's a, a big fan of, well, it could always be worse. She loves to say that even when she's talking about herself and how her back hurts and her knee hurts. And, and I'm not a big person who wants to receive joy because other people are suffering then that, that never seems right to me but it's like you know at the same time it's like yeah i got a lot of unknowns in my life yep. 
but the gnomes are pretty good. good. Amen to that. Because if all I have to do today is sit on the couch and watch Family Feud with my mother, that's it's, all right. Yeah, it's enough. And that's enough. Yes. Yeah. And I'm great. Yes. I'm yes. grateful for it. I think the way we fill ourselves up is, is letting ourselves sit in the moments and the experiences that we can have. Hmm. I can't sit on that couch thinking about all the other places I wish I, I was. What fills me up is if I just sit on the couch and I'm actually just there. Mm. I was like a little creatively stifled when all this stuff first happened. And then now I'm creating stuff to do and calling people and putting stuff together. And it's like, oh, I guess, I guess I'm not stifled anymore. That's right. <laughs> so sometimes it even can surprise you. And, and again, I know people are, people all have different experiences and I think we just got to find the knowns and sit and in the knowns. Well, that brings us, Rev, to our marination station. I mean, Ooh. already there, I mean, ooh, everything I feel like could be on this marination station. Is anything coming up for you that we can really think about in terms of how to support each other, how to support ourselves, how to support this world, how to be more supportive, how to do any of these definitions, any of the yeah, stuff, yeah. what's coming up well, for I, you? I think, I think it's easy to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. So what we gotta do is we gotta activate our joy, right? And, and, and so sometimes that means we got to figure it out and it may, it may be cumbersome. It may, for, for example, the gym's closed. So obviously working out, well, maybe not obvious, but working out is very important. Oh, obviously. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, part of my therapy mm -hmm. and the gyms were closed and I was able to work out outside, but then the weather got bad. And so I tried to jump rope in the garage, but the ceiling's not high enough. And I can't really do anything in the house because I sweat like a crazy person. And so I thought, well, maybe if there's like a covered place, I still, I don't have any options. And so I rode around to a couple different parks that we had that I hadn't been to in decades. And I found a covered basketball court. So an open air basketball court, yeah, but covered. And so I could jump rope in a rainstorm in an open air covered basketball court. Do you know that that is one of the most joyful moments of this whole pandemic for me? Wow. Was finding, and, and maybe that sounds ridiculous. No, it doesn't. It was just something I'd never, I barely ever jump roped. I certainly wasn't jumping rope outside. And anybody who knows me knows when it starts raining, I run indoors as quickly as I possibly can. And so I just was like, well, I just have to use the knowns that I have. Yes. Because ultimately I just want to be able to work out. Yes. And it was like I was praying for it to rain again. Oh my so God. Basketball court. If there was just something, I put on some worship music. <laughs> this was jumping rope with this ferocious rainstorm around me. And I'm telling you, that was one of the highlights of this whole pandemic. And I have enjoyed going back there. I've gone back there when it's not raining. I've gone back for the few times that it has rained. So there are other ways to do things. Yeah. We, we just sometimes, in, in this situation, we, we gotta be active and not give up on, okay, this is what I need. How can I make this happen? Yes. Yes. I have no place to go. I need to work out. It's pouring down, raining outside. Think, Alan, what can you do? Yeah. You know, just be active and deliberate on figuring out your knowns that yeah. can fill you up, even in a situation where we don't have everything that we typically would at our fingertips. But I also love that the thing that, that you found to help you activate your joy needed some support to cover you. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, is like, it is so connected, all of this, like yeah. the activating the joy, the support that you needed in order to enjoy a rainstorm, in order to be yeah. able to be outside so that you feel covered and creating those endorphins too, because we are in this quarantine. We're required to stay inside a lot. So we need to find those places where we can. Right. 
let it out. And All the supporting of others that is happening right now is so vital and so necessary and so like tide turning, right? Yeah. But we just got to make sure we're filling ourselves back up, you know? Yeah. So if that means to take a couple days and just support yourself for a second, that is okay. We got to oxygenate ourselves first before we can try to oxygenate those around us. And, yeah. and, the, and the reality is this pandemic, it's not anywhere near over. Right. I mean, we got a lot of stuff ahead. These schools opening, it, as families are scared. Yeah. Parents are scared. Educators are scared. It's a real thing. In order to like champion and support your cause and your idea, make sure you get yourself full. Amen. And when in doubt, shut some business. <laughs> when in doubt, from scratch. Make some biscuits from scratch. I know that's right. Let's rename them pandemic biscuits <laughs> <laughs> or support biscuits. <laughs> oh, Rev, I love you so much. And I am oh. so grateful for you spending your time with us today and giving so much wisdom and speaking on support in such an eloquent, beautiful way. You are a great human and I can't wait for future light workers to know you and hopefully work with you one day when this world reopens and in the meantime you can look up alan and all the links that i'm posting below in the description box and follow him on instagram i'll put all that there so you can continue to be inspired by and, and feel supported by and also support him as well so thank you so much rev and i love you for your support always biscuits here you go. And biscuits. And biscuits. But you got to put them right in here. That's right there. A joint biscuit. I love you, Rev. All right. I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.